Hello everyone from Prince of Peace Catholic Church Children's Religious Education. This is Rigo recording from our third grade classroom, thinking and missing all of you. I hope you're all doing well. Parents, grandparents, guardians, siblings, and of course our students. We miss you very much. We know that these are very scary times and that you're probably tired of being home and wish you could go outside and play, go to the park, uh, start joining your clubs, go back to school to see your friends, and come to church and be with all of us, and be with Jesus in the sacraments. We know that this is something that you've never experienced before. I've never experienced this myself in 42 years, and I also am a little scared. But I want to encourage you that God is in control. And that's my primary message to you today. I'd like to begin this video by just sharing with you a little bit about um, what our plans are for children's religious education here at Prince of Peace for the next few weeks and possibly more. Before I do that, I want to start with a reading from the Word of God, from the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 5, sorry, chapter 4, verse 35 to 41. On the evening of that same day, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side of the lake. So they left the crowd. The disciples got into the boat in which Jesus was already sitting, and they took him with him. Other boats were there too. Suddenly a strong wind blew up, and the waves began to spill over into the boat, so that it was about to fill with water. Jesus was in the back of the boat, sleeping with his head on a pillow. The disciples woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we are about to die? Jesus stood up and commanded the wind. Be quiet, he said to the waves. Be still. The wind died down and there was a great calm. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Why are you frightened? Do you still have no faith? But they were terribly afraid and began to say to one another, Who is this man? Even the wind and the waves obey him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This story from Mark's Gospel is the Gospel that our Holy Father Pope Francis read from St. Peter's Square this past Friday, March 27th. In his special Urbi et Orbi blessing to the city and to the world, which he did specifically in response to this global health crisis with the coronavirus. This is a blessing that the Pope only offers on Christmas and Easter and at the inauguration of each new Pope. But the Holy Father Pope Francis made the exception. He saw the need that there was in the world to receive the blessing from the Holy Father in Rome, but also the blessing from God. I encourage all parents to go online, go to the Vatican website or the Vatican YouTube channel, and go and see this one-hour um, video of the Pope's message in beautiful St. Peter's Square. It was an incredible scene. It was dark, it was raining, and St. Peter's Square was completely empty. The Holy Father was by himself, along with someone who was assisting him. And it was in that environment that the Holy Father read the scripture passage and then gave us a beautiful sermon, a message of encouragement, a message that addresses the fear and the anxiety that we're all experiencing, the sorrow and the loss of those who are sick, and some who are dying. And he was able to give us a message of hope through the reading of this gospel. It was a surreal scene that you have to go and see for yourself. The Holy Father, who suffers from sciatica and only has one good healthy lung, walked back from St. Peter's Square up to the portico. And from there, he was able to venerate an icon of Our Lady, and a crucifix, a large crucifix, that had been brought out specifically for these times. 
Apparently, this crucifix had been very instrumental in bringing about healings in a previous pandemic centuries ago. The Holy Father prayed, and then Pope Francis went inside where he had some time of Eucharistic adoration. And he was praying so intensely, unlike I had seen any Pope pray before in front of a camera. And then he put on the humeral veil, which priests and, and, and bishops and deacons use when they're going to process the Blessed Sacrament or do benediction where they're going to bless the people with the Blessed Sacrament. And he put on the veil and he went over to the altar, picked up the Blessed Sacrament in the monstrance and went out to the portico facing the empty square. But of course, he was really thinking about the whole world outside, those who are sick and those who are afraid of catching this virus and, and those who are suffering and those who are trying so hard to help people in this crisis. And he gave the whole world a blessing. It was absolutely a historic and truly a God moment that I encourage all of you to see for yourselves. In his message, the Holy Father talks about this gospel reading, which I just shared. And he points out that it begins by saying, when evening had come, truly we are all experiencing darkness. He says, darkness has gathered over our squares, our streets, and our cities. It has taken over our lives, filling everything with a deafening silence and a distressing void. He says, we can feel it in the air. We might find ourselves at this time, he says, afraid and lost. Like the disciples, like the apostles who were in the boat, we are in this boat together. And suddenly this storm comes and we're afraid. Of course we're afraid. We're not sure what's going to happen. This storm is unlike anything we've experienced. We in Florida are used to hurricanes and hurricane season. But this is something that we cannot even see or track. It's an invisible enemy. And so naturally, we're experiencing the anxiety of this. But Pope Francis calls us to think of all of us together being on this boat. And he tells us, notice how Jesus is sleeping in this passage. In fact, he notes this is the only time we hear about Jesus sleeping in the Gospels. He's on a boat that's caught in a dangerous storm. His disciples are afraid for their lives and Jesus is asleep. He points out that when Jesus wakes up, he asks them a very powerful and revealing question. Why are you afraid? Have you no faith? In this gospel passage, it's almost as if the opposite of faith is not lack of faith or unbelief, but the opposite of faith is fear. Pope Francis points out that they believed in him, and they even called on him. So it's not that they didn't believe or trust in him, but notice how they ask him, Teacher, do you not care if we perish? That's a very, very powerful question. Do we believe God cares whether we perish or not? Do we believe, whether, do we believe God cares about what's going on in the world right now? Do we believe God cares about our parents, our mom and our dad's jobs and careers? Do we believe God cares about our teachers and our friends at school that we can no longer see? Do we believe that God cares about those who are serving and caring for the sick in hospitals, doctors, nurses, nurse assistants, medical professionals who are being heroic in caring and serving their neighbors at this time. Pope Francis tells us that that's the essential question that we have whenever we doubt God. Does God really care? And the answer is absolutely yes. He cares, he says, more than anyone cares about us. He says, once they've called on him, he saves his disciples from their discouragement. He talks about how this is not a punishment from God. 
This is not a judgment from God. At least he says we shouldn't see it primarily along those lines. He says it's a call for us to deeper faith, to deeper trust, a wake-up call. He points out how now so many of the things we rely on, the things we filled up our days and our schedules with, and even our hearts and our minds with, even to the point that one might say they compete with God and with our faith and the practice of our religion. Whether it be work or uh, the busyness of our daily schedules, trying to rush to make all these curricular and extracurricular activities, sports, entertainment, trips, things that in and of themselves are not bad, they're good. But however, we are starting to see that in this in midst of this crisis, all these things have been taken away from us. We don't have sports. Much of our entertainment has been taken away. Many people can no longer go to work or are told not to go to work. Some are working from home. Sadly, some are losing their jobs. We can see that our government is doing their best, but they're not able to provide a quick, efficient solution to this problem. We can see that even science is unable to catch up and to keep up with the, with the development of these new viruses. And so where do we find a firm foundation? Well, Pope Francis looks, says, look no further than this St. Peter Square in which he was in, and the faith of St. Peter, who when Jesus asked, who do you say that I am? He said, you are the Messiah, the Son of God. And Jesus tells him in Matthew chapter 16, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And you shall be called Peter, for upon this rock, you are Peter, for upon this rock I will build my church. So, our foundation, our anchor in this boat that we're in as we're sailing through, um, through this storm, our anchor is Jesus. What keeps us firm and secure in this crisis and in any crisis is Jesus. Our faith in Jesus is what helps us to make it through. What a wonderful, wonderful message from Pope Francis. I am only scratching the surface, but I want to encourage you to go and read the entire text for yourselves of this sermon that Pope Francis gave during this Orbi et Orbi blessing that he gave on Friday, March 27th. He even says something about parents and children. He says, How many fathers, mothers, grandparents, and teachers are showing our children in small everyday gestures how to face up to and navigate a crisis by adjusting their routines, lifting their gazes, and fostering prayer? We're seeing so many people coming together to help one another. We're seeing so much self-sacrificial service in our world. This is a time to realize that we need God and we need each other. When you're home in your self-isolation, practicing social distancing, are you bringing prayer into your home? Let me remind you parents, as I've said many times before, that you are the primary teachers. You are the primary catechists. And now, I'm not able to teach your children. Our wonderful volunteer catechists are not able to meet and teach your children for the time being. But at home, you are now the one who is encouraged and called to do that. Are you bringing prayer, the Word of God and Scripture? Are you bringing that to your living room? Are you watching the Mass via internet, live stream, from whatever source you like. You can watch the Prince of Peace Mass Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. and daily Mass even at 12, 10 p.m. through our Prince of Peace website. We also have a YouTube channel. We want you to stay connected with God, but also with your parish. These are very, very difficult times. We're not asking you to... Uh, do something that you are not able to do. We know that you're stressed. 
We know that all of a sudden you've been asked to be a homeschooler and you've never done that before. Well, as someone who's been homeschooling for more than 10 years, I can tell you, you can do this. God made you the primary teachers of your children. That has never changed. That is true now. That was true before. <clears throat> and that will be true once this crisis is over. So God is with you, giving you the grace that you need. If you're open to receive it and ask for it, he'll give you the grace to make it through, to be the best teacher your children can ever have. Because that's what it means to be a parent. So don't be afraid of that and don't be discouraged. If you're not perfect at it, I'm not perfect at it. In fact, I'm pretty lousy. But you know what? My wife, Monica, compliments me. And together, with God's grace, we're doing a great job. You can do that too, because God is with you. In terms of children's religious education, the Diocese of Orlando has suspended all masses and all public gatherings, liturgical meetings and services and so forth, ministry meetings. And so we have no children's religious education in person until April 15th. After April 15th, we may have to wait a little bit longer for that period, might be extended. But for now, that's what we know. What I've decided, and together with some of our catechists we've thought about doing, is we're going to continue to, to, to make an effort to reach out to your family. Even though, parents, I know you got this. You're the primary teachers of the faith in your home. We're hoping to provide a sense of normalcy for the children. And so, starting next Sunday, we're going to be making recording uh, videos for you to, to watch with, your, with the children at home. We're also going to be setting up online classes, virtual children's religious education, also on Sundays. Uh, we'll have different meeting times depending on the class. Uh, we'll be able to have you guys come on board through a platform such as uh, Google Hangouts or Zoom. Um, you'll get more information, detailed information, in your, in your weekly email. Also, we'll have information on the parish website, princeofpeaceormond.com. Uh, if you go to the, to the bar and go where it says religious education, look up children's religious education, and I'll have some details there for you as well as to when we'll be meeting for BPK through kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, and fifth grade. We just want you to, to have an opportunity to have a sense of, okay, I'm still part of this community. We know that you might not be able to be there live with us. You have a lot of things going on at home. But we encourage you to try to make it so that we can see each other, even if through a computer screen. So thank you so much for tuning in.